Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Studio 416. I'm Dan Carter, along with Cameron Ford here on uh, this uh, wonderful uh, New Year's Day, I do believe. And uh, we've got Reese Thompson uh, with us. And uh, uh, Cameron, why don't you uh, uh, get Reese started here? Yeah, fantastic. So, Reese, I, this is actually the first time we ever met in person, um, but uh, you recently reached out to me about playing here at Secret Trail Brewing Company, which is where we're recording this interview today. Mm-hmm. And um, I just wanted to, you know, talk to you about your show coming up on Sunday, January 2nd, uh-huh. and um, ask you just a few questions about where you're from, man. Like, h- how old are you, by the way? Um, 18. 18. Fantastic. So you're not the uh, the first 18-year-olds to grace our stage, actually. But <laughs> we do have a very, very solid influx of younger musicians. Mm-hmm. And um, what school do you go to? Um, Inspire School of Arts and Sciences. Fantastic. Awesome. Um, yeah, we have a few people who come over to our stage from Inspire School. Um, do you know Emma and Will? Uh, yes, they are both my best friends, have been for a long, long time. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's that's such a cool little community that we have now with Inspire is that we um, we we stay plugged in with all of their musicians. And so we get a chance to actually get turned on to really cool younger musicians uh over here even though we kind of have a more older crowd (laughs) we don't really draw too many 18 year olds obviously um because we serve alcohol so we don't actually have uh, uh, very many people here who are under the age of 21 but we still love to hear new music from young musicians like yourself Mm -hmm. um and so yeah uh, for the folks out there because this was interesting to me how many times do you think you emailed me before i finally got onto this before i finally got you onto the schedule oh no (laughs) uh that's about uh a lot pro lowballing probably 20 yeah i i counted it up i think it was 14 (laughs) because i wanted to talk to him about that he's such a persistent uh, but also a very patient gentleman. It, it's not like mm. they came through every single day. He would send, uh, he would tag us on Instagram and say, like, wherever he played. Um, and it would say just, you know, Hey, secret trail, looking to play at secret trail. Here's my show at farmers or here's my show over at, um, yeah, where have you been playing? Yeah. Oh, a lot of different places in Chico. Um, as well as Oroville, like in Chico, there was, um, uh, allies pub, um, drunken dumpling, um, the barn, La Salle's, and then over in Oroville, I've played at uh, the Union, uh, Purple Line Winery, um, and then other places just around the area. One of my favorites is uh, Farmers Brewing down in Princeton. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I just play a whole bunch of everywhere around Butte County, and I'm trying to just push myself just a little bit more outwards, just so I can get. To other places. Well, Cameron, what took you so long? You know what? There's such an influx of people who hit my inbox about, I think it was probably maybe this summer. It was around like July and August mm-hmm. uh, when all of a sudden I was starting to get at least four or five emails a week. Mm-hmm. So it became really tricky to kind of navigate that. Um, but what actually really helped was, yeah, getting tagged by you on Instagram <laughs> at all of his shows. He would always put on his story, he would tag secret trail just to kind of show me what what he sounded like you know what i mean mm-hmm. because he sent a video but you know I, I've, I've i get five videos a week you know what i mean so it's kind of hard to keep up with it and he sent over he kept on tagging us at instagram and i was like i like this this is cool like he's he's playing everywhere but here and he sounds good like let's let's give him a shot you know yeah. what i mean like reese how long have you been playing um solo gigs about well i would say two-ish year two or three-ish years but like there's that whole you know one and a half year period where there was just absolutely no playing yeah um but yeah i started back in like mid 2019 i believe Mm -hmm. um as mostly just kind of a project for whenever any of my bands couldn't play anywhere and i was like well why don't i just try to learn some stuff and uh perform like that um or just perform solo how long have you been playing in bands uh, since about, um, seventh grade. Okay. Uh, same, I've been with the same band, Mark three. Um, that's, uh, me, uh, my friend, Will, his brother, Garrett, and one of our friends, David Nielsen. Um, we've just been playing for, uh, yeah, since, uh, about seventh grade. And, uh, since then we've just been playing a whole bunch of other places and then it got to the point where we're like uh where there's some places or venues that we couldn't play 
and there were just songs that I wanted to do myself that mm -hmm. wouldn't work with the band. Um, so I just uh, started doing that by myself and um, it just kind of turned into its own thing. Uh, you want to uh, uh, sing your first song for us today? Uh, sure. Tell uh, us about it. Uh, so I always like to start off every set with uh, Folsom Prison Blues, uh, like one of my favorite um, Johnny Cash songs. He always starts his shows with that. Um, and I just kind of take influence from how he starts his shows. It's always like, hello there, my name's Johnny Cash, and just starts into that. And I do something similar with, uh, howdy, my, or hi, my name's Reese Thompson, and I'm going to play a few songs for you today. And then just start in. Thompson right here on Studio 416. We got Cameron Ford and Dan Carter. And uh, Reese, you got a nice uh, nice baritone there. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's real nice. Um, does that influence uh, most of your music? Somewhat. Mm -hmm. um, there, are like, there are some songs I uh, listen to and I'm like, oh yeah, that'll definitely fit my range. And then there's others that I like to listen to a lot uh, where I'm like, that will never fit my range in a thousand years. <laughs> But I can adjust it, and I change the key and change what I, whatever to just make it fit for the solo acoustic thing. That's great. Um, how long have you been uh, playing the guitar? Oh, I'd say about 10 years. About 10 years, and that's a really nice tailor you got there. Do you have a yes. story that goes with it? Um, yeah, well, um, my dad and I... Sorry. Uh, we were looking for an acoustic guitar... Um, uh, that just had a really nice sound because I started to play more acoustic guitar with uh, one of my bands. And um, we were looking around and we found this one locally um, where this guy had only played it for a few hours, but it's been in his attic or basement, I can't remember which, for like 20, some 20 years. Um, we looked at the serial date um, or serial number, found the date, and it was like very early 90s may um still made by um taylor himself um um still man-made uh the strings on it were absolutely horrible because they were still the original strings mm -hmm. um and at first i was thinking nah, i don't know and my dad was like well why don't we have him taken into hauser's music that's the music shop um in oroville that's where i live 
um, and uh, have them change the strings there and then play and then see what it's like. And um, we wait like a couple days when the guy goes in and then we get a call from Brett Johnson who runs the place saying, immediately saying, guys, if you do not buy this guitar, I will because this is one of the best sounding guitars I've ever had. We go down there. I start playing with new strings. I'm like, I want this one. And so then we bought it off the guy and uh, then we got electronics in it so I can just plug it in um, and it sounds great. Um, We have like a, it's like a mix between a PZO and a uh, microphone uh, pickup. So I'm able to like do a blend between the two and I have like a little sweet spot that just gets the right sound between the two. So it gets like the full sound whenever I play. Uh, is your dad musical? You come from a musical family? Uh, no, I do not. Um, my dad is an avid lover of music. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom used to dance. Uh, she played like a little bit of clarinet, but otherwise there's not really any immediate uh, musicians in my family. I have like a great grandma that used to uh, play just about anything and everything in a band. Um but um, otherwise, uh, no, I'm really the only one. So how'd you get bit by the bug? Um, I don't know. Um, I remember like when I was really young, uh, the first instrument I played was piano. And I kind of begged my mom. I was like, uh, like Mom, I want, I want to take piano lessons. I really want to take piano lessons. She's like, fine, okay. Uh, so I started uh, taking piano lessons. I know my sister started playing music first because um, she was playing flute. Um, in a uh, middle school band. Um, and then I started in on piano and she started in a little bit after me. Um, uh, but yeah, th- uh, then one year later I started picking up guitar. Um, and, uh, it just played and played and played and played fifth grade. I started tuba, which I still play to this day. <laughs> I always wanted to play something that was big and loud, and that was one of them. The other big and loud thing I had was um, just before seventh grade when we started up um, my band Mark III, I started playing bass, um, in which I have a funny story with that. Um, So I was going to start playing bass with a pick, um, but like the picks that uh, Will handed me were like very thin, very floppy, not great for bass. And so I was like, okay, so I'll just play with my fingers. Um, But I didn't really know how to play with it, so I played at this really weird angle. Um, I know this will be just auditory, so there's no reference to it. Uh, But it it was very weird. It was very awkward Hmm. on how to actually play it. And it wasn't until I started, like, watching bassists live, or, like, some of my favorite bassists, like Cliff Burton, Geezer Butler, um... Yeah, uh, and how they started playing bass, and I'm like, huh, either I'm doing something revolutionary or I'm just doing something very wrong. <laughs> uh, I figured out it was the latter. Um, <laughs> and so it was a bit of an adjustment where my uh, bass playing kind of dipped down in quality as I was trying to like figure out how to play, but then as soon as I uh, found out the right way how to play or fully figured it out, all of a sudden I was able to do a whole lot more than I was before. A lot more better dynamics, better playing. Um, that was a complete side tangent on bass. Sorry about that. No worries. Um, we got an hour and a half to fill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can, then I can fill that up. Um, Settle in. <laughs> um, but then after bass, um, it was a little while later, I got myself my first electric guitar um, just so I could like experiment and write stuff. It wasn't really for performing, and I uh, still don't. Um then um, I picked up harmonica um, a little bit afterwards. Um, I've always thought uh, like blues harmonica solos were like really cool. I still don't know how to bend a note on harmonica, but I've always been trying. <laughs> um, and then not too, too long ago, um, I got myself my first mandolin. Um, and so I've been playing that at home, um, just playing stuff that there's a surprising a lot of uh, or sorry, there's a surprising amount of songs from my childhood that use a lot of mandolin. Um, For that, instance, um, so there's this game I used to love to play um, called Skylanders, and the music in it um, had a lot of mandolin. And I've listened back to it, and I'm like, wow, they, this 
this game has no right in having this good of music uh, because it's it's really well written. Uh, and I look back, I start playing it, I look back on it, and it's like, wow, this is really good. It's really well written uh, to the point where I want to try and write stuff that has mandolin in it, but I just don't know enough to uh, start implementing in, uh, implementing that in. But um, I'm still learning. Right on. We're going to take a short break right now. We've got uh, Reese Thompson, and uh, we're here at the uh, Secret Trails uh, Brewing Company. Uh, Cameron Ford, Dan Carter. This is Studio 416. We'll be right back. Reese, are you ready to do another tune? Uh, yes. I did mention before how um, I started learning harmonica a little bit. And I started implementing that into exactly one song in my set list. But I still think it works nonetheless. Uh, Last Dance with Mary Jane by Tom Petty. She grew up in an Indiana town Had a good look of mama Never was around, but she grew up tall and she grew up right with the Indiana balls on an Indiana night. When she moved down here around the age of 18, she blew the balls away, it was more than they seen. I was introduced, and we both started grooving. I said, Dick, it better, but I got to keep moving. Reese Thompson right here on Studio 416. We got uh, Cameron Ford and Dan Carter. Uh, Reese is uh, 
uh, going to be uh, playing at the Secret Trails Brewing Company on Sunday the 2nd. If all goes right, uh, this show will air on Saturday the 1st. And so uh, uh, there's a chance for you to come out and hear the man in person on Sunday afternoon. What time? Uh, Reese is playing from 3 to 5 p.m. on Sunday, January 2nd here at Secret Trail Brewing Company. Right on. Uh, Reese, you sound like you got a rock and roll voice. Yeah, um, I've got. i noticed throughout the years um, that I have a bit of a jack-of-all-trades kind of voice because hmm. I did start off with rock um, and just singing just to sing. I didn't have any kind of training. Um, it wasn't until I got into my high school Inspire uh, where I really started learning how to use my voice properly, how to save it and make sure it doesn't die out in like the next 10 years. Mm. Um, and that really helped through um, performing a lot of theater. Um, I've been in the past um, three uh, musicals at Inspire, um, such as last year I had the uh, titular role of Phantom of the Opera in the show Phantom of the Opera. So I, when I found out I got that role, I was like, oh, so I have to really learn how to sing, I guess. <laughs> um, and especially with that kind of with that kind of music, um, uh, I learn how to um, uh, just expand my range, um, go into go in, especially going into the higher range um, effectively without breaking your voice completely because. Up to that point, I thought, oh, well, I'm just a bass. I'm not really supposed to sing that high. Then they gave me that role, which is supposed to be for a tenor. I'm like, that's about like two parts up. I don't know whose idea that was. Mm. Um, so well, that, after, that must have been very challenging. Uh, how, did, how did you go about that? Or who helped you? Or how did they help you? Um, it was um, major, a lot of help from my, uh, or the vocal teacher of, inspire uh olivia cerullo um she uh gave me a whole bunch of advice as far as like how to warm up your voice properly and like these weird things you do with like uh uh, massaging like your cheekbones your nasal cavity um all this different stuff to uh make sure your voice just works right as well as like, I have to give props to whoever invented the idea of cough drops because that helped me immensely. Hmm. Do you do any songs from that show or any of your musical shows? Uh, no. 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 Okay. It's... I just thought I'd take a shot. <laughs> nah. I. You do them so much to the point where you get a little bit sick of them. As well as I've, tr- I have tried to learn some of the songs from. Uh, those musicals um, and especially just trying to do it with just one guitar and one guy singing it's uh, it can get very complicated very fast the orchestrations the arrangements of everything like it's doable I'd say it's a lot more doable with recording because I do a lot of recording at home um, and I started to record a few songs and then just I got lazy I'm not gonna lie um, but uh yeah, it, it's just too hard to try and do that live, for me at least. Oh, what's your set list look like? Who, what, what kind of things? Do you do anything original? Uh, yes, I do have a few originals, but it will four to be exact. Um, but that's four in like a set list of like 85 songs. Mm-hmm. Um, I do. I like to do a little bit of everything because I like a little bit of everything. The first song I did... Uh, it was Johnny Cash, um, and then the third song on my set list is a Metallica song that um, I saw them turn into an acoustic song, and that was one of my main uh, thoughts for doing a acoustic uh, or solo acoustic um, uh, little uh, gig thing. And I thought, hey, if they can do that, then I can try to do that. And I started uh, doing some of their songs, other songs that I just really like i decided to turn into songs for just a guy with an acoustic guitar you want to do that metallica tune oh yeah i'm always down for doing that one all right the the capo goes on yeah (laughs) this is the four horsemen by metallica
Jesus a right Come take your life All through the dead of night With force men ride Oh, choose your fate and die Wow, Taking a toll on you, the lines that crack your face. Famine, your body, he has on through, withered in every place. Pestilence for what you had to endure, for what you got put others through. Death, deliverance for you for sure. Oh, now there's nothing you can't do. Thompson, you got it on uh, FM 90.1 KZFR Chico. We're here at the uh, Secret Trails Brewing Company, and we're also KZFR.org, by the way. And uh, we've got Reese Thompson, Cameron Ford's uh, engineering this afternoon. I'm Dan Carter. Happy New Year, everybody. What a beautiful, beautiful thing to be able to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Reese, do you uh, do you collaborate with your uh, uh, fellow people at Inspire very much? Uh, yeah. Um, one of my one of my favorite things that I did this year. Um, well, let, let me back up a little bit for people in our audience who don't know what Inspire is. Could you give us a little bit of an introduction? Oh yeah. Um, so uh, Inspire, um, it's. Uh, it's this uh, great. Uh, it's a public school, so anyone, anyone, and everyone can enroll. But it's a college prep school. Uh, we have like an A B day schedule, so um, A days periods one through four, uh, B days periods five through eight. We have eight periods. Um, we also have these things called advisories. Um, each um, each uh, grade has them. They're divided di- divided up into few different groups. I'm with uh, um, Mr. Antonio and CERN. Um, I've been with him for the past four years. It's like this little family, um, like little home away from home, I guess. Um, but Inspire offers just so many different things for so many different people. Um, there's a lot of things about art. There's many things about music, um, but there's also plenty of stuff about engineering, science, um, and they also give you the option to major in different 
um, uh, I guess, what's the word? Um, uh, fields, areas. Fields, yes, thank you. In different fields. Um, like myself, I'm double majoring with instrumental music and recording arts. Um, cause that's the two things that I personally want to go into, um, when I'm uh, done with school. Um, do you have plans, uh, uh, particular plans where you might go after you graduate? Uh, yes. Um, actually I've been, uh, accepted into Chico state. Um, and that's my plan. Uh, to go to. Um... Oh, that's a horrible place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't need that. <laughs> Just come work, work, work here. <laughs> you can engineer the podcast. You can engineer the show. Um, but yeah, I want to try just ki- and... Just kidding. I'm a Chico yeah. State recording yeah, arts I'm... grad. Dan, Dan knows that, and that's the goof. I, I wouldn't be nearly what I am without Chico State. <laughs> yeah. That's for damn sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Actually, my friend Will, his dad is a professor at Chico State. Um, I can't remember for what, though. Uh, but his name is Forrest Hartman. If any of you know or remember what that's or what he does, then good on you because I can't remember. Yeah. Um, but I want to try and uh, double major there with um, recording arts and general music. I was just going to go with recording arts, uh, but um, I want to also do with general music so I have options available in case something doesn't work out um oh you don't need the general music dude you're good enough Get, do a, a double in marketing and recording arts uh, <laughs> that's what I, I, who knows? <laughs> you're you're good dude you you got I thought the... you were an arts guy <laughs> <laughs> no, go, no 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 go get that business minor <laughs> you're you get that marketing degree learn how to earn baby mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so in terms of uh, uh, collaboration with your fellow students, uh, uh, I interrupted you when you were talking about that. Oh, yeah. Um, So one of my favorite things that I did this year, um, we have like this thing called Day on the Purple where anyone and everyone um, is allowed to sign up for some kind of a performance, whether that's dance, music, maybe a comedy uh, stand-up routine. Um, And me and my friends wanted to get together and make a band and perform a song. Um, none of them have ever been in a band before, so I was kind of the de facto leader in that part. Um, and I wrote a song that we could all perform um, called I Talk to Ghosts. It was something I wrote out really quick, really fast, but I just started adding more and more and more to it because that's the problem when I write songs. It's very easy to start off with, but I'm like, hmm, what if I make it harder and I just add more and more stuff, whether that's like timing issues or harmonies. Um, And uh, it's just, it's just, it was just really fun to do. And then we performed the song. It was super fun, Uh, especially working with people who never been in a band before and guiding them towards the right thing. It was, it was fun. Nice. Nice. Day on the purple, they call it. Yes. Huh? How often does that happen? Um, I believe it's twice a year, one, one in the fall and then one in the late spring. Okay. Nice. Um, let's hear another song if, uh, you're so inclined. Okay. Um, uh, how about, um, an original I wrote? Um, Perfect. it's, uh, I, it's one of the, uh, originals that people like the most and it's been on KZFR before, uh, with, um, it was a Chico art collective, uh, thing, they reached out and wanted to hear an, ori- uh, wanted an original song. So this is a more stripped down version of that, I guess. Yeah. Props to Chico Art Collective. Go yep. for it. All right. Uh, this one is called Kenzie. So much to me 
Friends are friends and there's just nothing I can do But I guess things are better off that way Every day I tuck these feelings away Why am I to play this stupid game? Well, I don't know how to say how I feel about you But you just mean so much to me Friends are friends and there's just nothing I can but I guess things are better off that way, Thompson on uh, Studio 416 on KZFR FM 90.1, KZFR.org. Dan Carter here along with Cameron Ford. Reese, uh, that's, that's a really nice song. You want to uh, tell us what it's about or what inspired it? Um, well, I won't use names, but uh, um, it was over the course of um, lockdown, uh, just staying at home. Uh, there was one friend of mine... Um, who I was just uh, getting really close with, uh, talking almost every day to, and just started to ask myself, do I like this person? Do I want to go out with this person? And then, like, as I just started thinking about it more, I was like, no, I think it'd probably be best for us both if we just stayed friends. That's probably just going to be the best scenario. And then the song just kind of just came out. Uh, huh. It's just one of those, those... That's when you know it's one of those really good songs when there's like you don't spend a lot of time on of it on it it just comes out naturally yeah i've heard that um um do you spend a, a much time writing songs um it depends it always depends uh with whatever song i'm working on sometimes they're just like uh the last one kenzie uh where they just come out just like that and then there's others um, there's one song that I've put on uh, my YouTube channel. Um, it was called The Sky is on Fire. I worked on that song for about like a year because I just wanted to make it just right because that's the other problem. I'm a bit of a perfectionist hmm. and I wanted that song to be just right um, as far as like the riff, the lyrics. Um, and it was like one of the first times I ever played a guitar solo because that's the other thing. I'm great at playing guitar riffs, but I am horrible at playing guitar solos. I've gotten a little better. Um, but um, it was one of those things where I just worked and worked and worked at it. And the final product, I think this there is a good song in there. It just wasn't very well recorded or mixed and stuff. Um. You've played at a, a lot of venues. Uh, how did how did you go about uh, uh, making that available for yourself? You, uh, what 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 did you do to make that happen? Um, Was it like the same thing with Cameron, where you sent him one hundred and seventy five emails? <laughs> some some of some of them, yes, and then other times there are, it's a lot more easier. Maybe you send out uh, two, if you're lucky, maybe just one email, and they get right back to you saying I. 
it's usually good um, when they get like right back to you and say like, um, oh yeah, uh, we're booking for like um, it, within the next few months. Uh, what dates are you available? And say like August or whatever. Um, and then other times you just need to go at them again and again. Um, and then sometimes they uh, come back to you. Sometimes they don't. Um, and then other times um, you get back, you uh, send out an email and they respond right back saying, sorry, we are not booking until next year. All right, great. Thanks. <laughs> mm. And at least they just tell you up front, like, yeah, we're not booking for the next while. Um, but then we just still keep them in mind for um, uh, uh, when that time comes around and uh, looking back at bookings, uh, where all I've um, where all I've emailed, where I've like played, and where haven't I played? And we we'll look at those, and we're like, huh, we haven't emailed that in a while. Let's follow up again. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, just, it's always a case to case basis. So, what sort of advice might you have for uh, uh, people who are trying to do what you do? People, you know, singer songwriters. Yeah. Um, just um, find find places where uh, either you want to play the most or where you think your music would work the best. Um, uh, just get a little note uh, notebook, fill out places where you've emailed them, and just fill out like maybe where uh, where you've emailed them or messaged them. Have you emailed them over? Have you gotten to them over email, uh, text messages, maybe over social media? Just write down where, uh, where uh, you uh, respond to them and where, if they have responded back, just write down, okay, where's our main source of communication? Um, because like this thing uh, today, uh, Cameron texted me um, about uh, coming here, whereas our um, my performance um, later will, uh, we've... Uh, discuss that over email so um just and then for trying to just get into some places um just email them uh just talk about like what you play um whether that's all originals what covers do you do and if possible and this is probably one of the best things to do have like little demo videos of yourself playing like how do you sound what kind of stuff do you play um, whether so, that's so a YouTube channel is very helpful. Uh, yes. Um, as well as just having videos like save like a little, uh, like either a little website or a Google drive. That's what I use, mm. um, of just little short clips of songs you've played in different places you've played. Um, especially when you've already had a repertoire, but if you don't just record songs, but like either on your couch or if you have a recording, uh, like, uh, software, just record into that and, uh, just try not to like edit it a whole bunch, uh, just so it's just you, um, and send that out to people and just hope for the best. We're gonna take a short break. Uh, we're gonna do some underwriters. You've got her on FM ninety point one KZFR Chico, KZFR dot org. We've got uh, Reese Thompson, Cameron Ford, and Dan Carter right here on Studio Four Sixteen. We'll be right back. Reese, do you do uh, any uh, busking or uh, uh, open mics? Um, I've done a couple open mics. Uh, I haven't personally busked before. I just usually like to play uh, venues um, or fundraisers. Uh, but no, uh, no busking before. I've done a couple uh, open mics though. Mm-hmm. And did you find that valuable, or was that what kind of what was the experience like for you? Um, at first, it's a little nerve wracking because like uh, it's not you. Most of the time, it's not planned. Uh, you have to come up or set up stuff on the fly. But once you start playing, the people that are there are usually there to see you. So, or just to see your kind of thing, what you're doing. Mm. Um, and it just, it becomes fine. It's very chill, very fast. Right on. Uh, another tune? Uh, so this is a good tune from uh, mid-2000s. Um, they're not a one-hit wonder band because they had like a couple hits. But this is my favorite one that they did. Um from KT Tunstall, uh, Black Horse in a Cherry Tree. Woo-hoo. But I know myself, so I'm gonna let it do all the talking. Well, I came across 
across a place in the middle of nowhere with a big black horse and a cherry tree. Well, I felt a little fear right upon my back. I said, don't look back, just keep on walking. But the big black horse, he said, look this way. He said, hey, hey baby, won't you marry me? Working in the early hours, so I stopped it dead for a beat or two. But I cut some corn and shouldn't have done, and now won't forgive me after all these years. So I sent it to a place in the middle of nowhere with a big black horse and a cherry tree. So, so happy and I got a big hole for the whole of the sea. Cause I said no. Reese Thompson right here on Studio 416 on this New Year's Day on uh, uh, FM 90.1 KZFR, Chico KZFR.org, Dan Carter and Cameron Ford hosting today. Reese, I'm thinking that I'm going to ask you to go right on into another tune, if you would. All right. Uh, I played this one uh, back my sophomore year for performance. Um, I remember... Um, there were other solo performances before me and uh they uh, uh they introduced who they were uh they said what song they were going to be doing and all this stuff i didn't have time for that because i was in a bunch of different performances in between that so i was like changing outfits uh, making i'm sure my instrument was ready or whatever so i didn't have time to see what they were doing and kind of bounce off of that i just walked out there i picked up my guitar and i just started playing because i didn't know what to do um, and, uh, partway through the song, I just heard the entire crowd and it was this whole big theater just started singing along with me. And it was like one of the best moments I've ever had in my life. Uh, this is, have you ever seen the rain by CCR? Oh, 
heart I know It's been that way For all my time To forever on it goes Through the circle Fast and slow I know If it can't stop I wonder I want to know Right here on Studio 416, uh, we got uh, uh, Cameron Ford and Dan Carter here on the radio with you this New Year's Day. Uh, and uh, tell us about uh, your uh, set coming up tomorrow at uh, uh, Secret Trails. Yeah, um, I'm playing. Yeah, playing here at uh, Secret Trails um, on Sunday. Um, just going to be playing the normal thing, uh, two hours, three three to five p.m. Um, come down for uh, good beer, good music. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. What more can you say? Yeah. I have to mention it is sec- Secret Trail Brewing Company. It's actually singular. Oh, <laughs> but everybody's, I'm sorry. everybody's still. <laughs> All right. Let's start over. No, it's, I know. It's seriously. <laughs> start from the top. No, it's so funny, though. We It, it happens pretty regularly around here. People yeah. actually call it Secret Trails, and it's just one trail. There's just. And, uh, uh, the owner, Michelle, uh, the co-owner, Michelle, she likes to say, there's only one. <laughs> there's only one secret trail. <laughs> so okay. uh, I have to correct you guys. It's okay. Secret Trail Brewing Company. Okay. <laughs> Cameron, you have anything uh, you want to ask? Uh, uh, yeah. Things? like I, You mentioned um, the, the, your vocal coach, Olivia. Mm-hmm. Is that her name? Yeah. Yep. Uh, tell me more about what it's like to learn how to sing at such a, a young age properly. Um, I never, I've never taken any classes. I'm a musician, too. But I'm always wondering what sort of um, did you do solfege like do re mi fa so that kind of stuff or uh, some of that yeah because um, yeah when you start off you just do you, you don't think about it you just sing um, and then once you start to learn um, you learn different uh, parts of your throat um, where you start to sing you don't sing from your chest you sing from your you sing from your gut your diaphragm how to use that properly breathing techniques. Um, and yeah, one, one of the main things was vocal warmups before you, uh, sing, cause it's just like any other muscle. You don't want to just go into any sport just straight away or like just, uh, play straight away. You want to do warmups. Uh, and after I kind of realized that, I'm like, oh yeah, I guess that is kind of the case. Whoops. Yeah, <laughs> imagine that's particularly true for, uh, performing in a musical theater. Oh yeah. Because oh, yeah. you need to make those people in the back row here. Yeah. Oh yeah, because um, yes, you have mics, um, but it, having mics versus, with uh, performances like what I do versus having mics with musical theater is a completely different mm. um, thing to do. Like with what I do uh, with solo acoustic guitar and just me, uh, you're able to do little inflections. You're just you're able to like do something real quiet and then like build up. With musical theater, you need to be as loud as possible all the time. Um, <laughs> just to, you always need to project. Always want to have your voice out there just so everyone and everyone can hear it. Um, because you never know when there's going to be a mic failure and uh, you're just out there on stage with no mic. You just need to be able to not shout at the top of your lungs, but sing from the top of your lungs and uh, make sure everyone in the theater hears you. Yeah, do you um, do you have any numbers from um, uh, Phantom of the Opera that you like were that you remember doing? Like, could you do a, a short little section from Phantom of the Opera for us, even without oh, the acoustic boy. guitar? I, I would just love to hear a moment because you've got oh. such a strong voice. Even if you should do one line for me, I'd be oh, so happy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what is it? Um, 
music of the night okay let's see if i remember the lyrics yeah um slowly gently music shall caress you hear it feel it secretly possess you open up your mind let your fantasies unwind in this darkness which you know you cannot fight the power of the music of the night yeah oh my gosh oh that was wonderful oh my god that was wonderful take my money (laughs) (laughs) yeah wow that was that was terrific yeah um uh thanks for doing that 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 really was good um how about i ask you to do as though you were performing and uh just do like three songs in a row all right I'm going to do two just in a row, and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Okay. And I'm uh, going to reintroduce everybody. Uh, uh, Reese Thompson, Dan Carter, Cameron Ford. We're here at Secret Trail Brewing Company and recording Studio 416 for FM 90.1 KZFR Chico, KZFR.org.
Reese Thompson right here on Studio 416 here on FM 90.1, KZFR, Chico, KZFR.org, Dan Carter and Cameron Ford hosting today on this uh, beautiful New Year's Day. Well, I hope it's going to be a beautiful New Year's Day as we're recording this. I hope it's going to be a beautiful New Year. Um, Reese, uh, what elements of your uh, uh, stage, uh, that is to say, uh, theatrical performance do you bring to uh, your uh, uh, singing like you're doing now? Um, I guess the main thing is adding a lot more character to um, singing um, or different emotions to uh, whatever singing. I used to just uh, sing just to sing, and there wasn't really anything behind that. I had a good voice, um, but there wasn't any emotion to it it didn't have any drive and then after doing a whole bunch of theater uh you learn to add that to whatever you're singing and just implement itself to um the uh, solo performance 
Um, as well as I started to like the idea of standing up and singing a lot more because um, I'm a lot more active um, with with my band Mark III. I've always been the most animated. I've always moved around a whole bunch. I head bang a whole bunch. It's um, I've always been a very active uh, performer. I'm not. I don't really like to sit in one place. Um, that's why I've always had a hard time. Um, before whenever I had to sing because I've always had to play an instrument sing and you're just kind of stuck to one spot but I learned to work around that uh, with different facial expressions um, just tapping your foot a whole bunch and just kind of swaying your body around it uh, it's a little bit but a little bit goes a long way with uh, what I'm doing mm. um, uh, how did you come up with your set list how what uh, what what <clears throat> Why did you choose the songs you choose? What are your influences? Um, <laughs> I, uh, I guess the, how I chose the songs were just, I like that song. I want to do that song. I'm going to add it. Mm. Um, and it could be everywhere from the Johnny Cash thing, Metallica, Creedence Clearwater Revival. Um, I do a childish, ga- uh, child ga- childish Gambino song. Um, I do Frank Sinatra. Um, just anything and everything that I like. One of my favorite songs that I do is a Pantera song. Um, You listen to the normal song. It's called The Great Southern Trend Kill. Um, You listen to the normal song and you're thinking to yourself, okay, now now I have a headache after listening to that. It's just... (laughs) And uh, just (laughs) loud guitars. But um, I saw this cover of it by... um, uh, I believe it was the Bailey Hounds. Um, I forget the name off the top of my head, but they did a cover of that song um, with like acoustic uh, guitars, a little bit of slide guitar here and there, uh, make it kind of like a cowboy song almost. Um, and it just sounds so cool that I'm like, you know what? I'm doing that. <laughs> um, and that's why I never like to say who does that song until after I do it. So. Mm. Uh, with covers like that, you never want to say who it is first. You want to say, so you're going to be surprised who does this next song. You do it, and then people are like, oh, wow, that was really nice. Who does that? Pantera. What? Yeah, Pantera, the ni- the 90s heavy metal band. Oh. Well, you have to play it now. All right. All right, we've got uh, Reese Thompson right here on Studio 416 on this New Year's Day on FM 90.1, KZFR, Chico, KZFR.org, along Dan Carter and uh, Cameron Ford. And here's something from Pantera.
in the studio with us. Uh, we're pre-recording this on, uh, what day is this? This is December 27th? Yep. Okay, we're re- pre-recording this on December 27th for air on New Year's Day. Reese Thompson uh, with his beautiful Taylor guitar and uh, Cameron Ford uh, over there and sitting in the engineer's chair. And uh, we're having a good time. I think we're having a good time. You mentioned that you do a Frank Sinatra tune. Yes. Would you like to do that for us? Yes. <clears throat> this one is uh, Fly Me to the Moon. Fly me to the moon Let me play Frank Sinatra for you here on Studio 416. Reese Thompson with his Taylor guitar. And uh, uh, it's just uh, been a great afternoon here uh, making this recording. Really appreciate you coming in. And uh, uh, if you want to play just a couple more, uh, that'll that'll get us through. Two more, you think? Two more. All right. I got that. West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountain, Shenandoah River. Life is older, older than the trees, younger than 
Reese Thompson right here on Studio 416. Reese, thanks a lot. Uh, you're playing here at Secret Trails. It should be tomorrow. Uh, yep, uh, 3 to 5. 3 to 5, right here at Secret Trail. Cameron Ford, thanks for uh, doing the engineering and uh, co-hosting. And I'm Dan Carter, and uh, this has been Studio 416. Stay tuned to FM 90.1 KZFR, Chico, KZFR.org. We've got Swing City coming up next, along with DJ's Vinyl Mix, and all mixed up after that. So lots of good radio ahead of you right here on FM 90.1, KZFR Chico, KZFR.org.